Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and as part of End of the World Week, which is my week-long readathon all about 20th century dystopian and post-apocalyptic fiction, I am doing these kind of daily videos about 20th century dystopian and post-apocalyptic fiction. And in the course of that, I've been thinking about what my own personal dystopia would look like. So this is what today's video is going to be about. It's basically just me thinking about all the things that scare me in the world and then trying to create a dystopian world around that. And it, with this video, I invite you to do the same if it's not too anxiety inducing for you to just think about whether what sort of dystopian world you would create if you were an author or maybe you are an author, in which case tell me about that as well. I, full disclosure, I'm not an author. I'm not a writer, I can't write. So uh, this is purely just kind of a, a little mind game. I'm not planning to turn this into a story or anything like that at all. And what I did for this was just write down some of the things that I'm afraid of and then how I could turn these into a dystopian world. So this is, this is also in a way a very personal video. You'll definitely learn a lot about my fears and worries in this one. As I've discussed in a previous video, which you'll find linked in the description box, by the way, I'll link the whole playlist in the description box, but I, I discussed what dystopian fiction tells us about the fears and worries of the time it was written in and, and, and about the author who wrote it. I think one big aspect of my life that I really don't want to change is um, children. I am not a mother and I don't plan on ever becoming a mother and this is something that is just not in my life plan. I like children, I like working with children, I'm very good at working with children but I really don't want any of my own and this is something that scares me about dystopian fiction like The Handmaid's Tale where uh, a woman's function to have children is not just prized, but is really her only purpose. So my personal dystopian horror nightmare would be one where I am forced to have children. Uh, <laughs> yes, we're going straight in there with the super personal and the really, really basic parts of life. Motherhood is just not for me. So that would be an absolute nightmare if in a dystopian future I was forced to have children. So dystopian world without any uh, reproductive rights for women would probably be, it will probably be the number one nightmare on a long list of nightmares. And I do realize by the way that I'm speaking from a place of privilege because there are lots of places in the world where women already don't have any reproductive rights. And I think that's a theme by the way that you'll find throughout this video and throughout general discussions of dystopian worlds, a lot of the things that we consider absolute worst case scenarios are already the reality for many other people. Uh, as is, for example, the second point on my list, I really don't like living in a big city. I mean, I assume so because I've never lived in a big city, but I don't like being in big cities. I don't like London. I don't like Cologne, I don't like Frankfurt, Stuttgart, I don't like big crowded places. Um, I don't see the beauty in skyscrapers and in masses and masses of people and in seven lane roads, the noise, the constant life around you is just not for me. My ideal living situation would be as remote as possible, basically a life where I don't have to see anyone unless I want to. And that is obviously something you don't get in a city. So my dystopian world would be a very urban one. And again, it's really funny that I kind of talk about this as a nightmare scenario when lots of people live in cities. And in fact, lots of people like living in cities. Uh, but this is just about my personal dystopian nightmare. Uh, similar to that, I wouldn't like to live in a world where I'm forced to be around people. So uh, this is kind of connected to the city life, but just imagine a world in which privacy isn't a thing and you are forced to physically be around other people a lot. This is something I already didn't like about living in a shared flat because I 
hated, for example, I am like the most introverted introvert, right? If I can avoid seeing other people, I will. So when I lived in a shared flat and I just went into the kitchen to make myself a coffee or make myself some dinner, I didn't want to have to chat to the other people living in the flat, but obviously you have to because you don't want to be an asshole. Uh, so in my dystopian nightmare world, uh, there wouldn't be any private spaces, uh, but people would be forced to live together in large groups. And again, this is my privilege talking because lots of people already live in large groups um, because there, there's no option for them to live by themselves or just with one other person or like in my case with one other person and two cats. Um, ideally with one other introvert and two cats. And my final kind of nightmare scenario is one where there are no cats. Just makes me sad. Cats are lovely. Cats are wonderful. Cats are the ideal pets and uh, it would be very sad to live in a world without them. Uh, to summarize, my nightmare dystopian future would be a world in which women are forced to have children whether they want to or not. Uh, a world that is so urbanized that your only option is to live in a big city. A world that doesn't have any privacy or space away from other humans, where you are around humans all of the time. And finally, a world without cute little kitty cats. So what I want to know from you is what does your personal dystopia look like? If you feel like sharing it, post it in the comments down below. Um, if you don't feel like sharing it, then I understand this is kind of a weirdly personal video and, and quite different from what I usually do on this channel. But hey, that's what reading lots of dystopia makes you think about. Am I right? Anyway, very interested to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching. Bye.